Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we have host virtual stitch-ins, create tutorial videos, and online quilt classes. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Today we're going to be talking about fabric rugs and sharing tips for tracking quilt progress. Um, and we're also going to be joined by this sample jelly roll rug that Pam recently did. Our show today is also <laughs> brought to you by, I was waiting for the teleprompter, QT Fabrics, and you can learn more about them in the links to the show notes. So we once again have the fun bin with us from QT, but we also, in honor of one of the topics, we have a jelly roll. Well, I don't think they call it a jelly roll. It's a two and a half inch Two and strips. a half inch strip set. <laughs> <laughs> but this is their speckles line, which, which is, is very cute. rainbow colors. I think we had their fat quarter speckles we did. earlier, it's which is there. really very cool. Yes. Awesome. All right. So fabric rugs hit me with some knowledge. I made one. I made one. My grandparents and made we're several. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I've made one. You've made one. We both have made the jelly roll rug pattern that's really popular out there now mine is a different configuration she made hers longer why did you make yours longer i made mine long and skinny because i made it to go in front of my cutting table so i used to have like these foam hopscotch mats that i got for five bucks there were disney princesses which i think are appropriate yeah so well except the princesses all worn off because i stood on their faces <laughs> So after a while, now it's just like weird hair. Now there's just eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have that in front of my cutting station because if I'm standing there cutting a long time, I want something. I have a hardwood floor in my sewing room. And so yeah. I wanted something with a little extra support. And I just thought this would be much cuter than old faded princesses. <laughs> That's true. Now, that it being is. said, like, very economical to get those foam hopscotch mats because it's like the foam tiles. Not like the super industrial foam tiles you could get. But, right. like, that's a good, cheap alternative. If you can find them at yard sale or a consignment shop, um, just, like, hopscotch mats. Right. Uh, so mine's long and skinny because I was trying to fit, you know, like a 60-inch wide thing. And so I, a little bit of math to try and guess, like, how long. To start. Right. Because... You start with a much smaller width, yeah. knowing that you're going to keep adding to it as you keep going around. And this can be as, I mean, people say they're going to use a jelly roll. A jelly roll. You can add as many strips as you want. As you can, yeah, exactly. And the the pattern, we can link to that in our show notes. Um, the list, the original listing's out on Etsy. Uh, and she's got all the measurements, you know, tips and all of that on how to actually put this together. But this is not the only style of fabric rug that you could make. It's just something that's kind of surged in popularity recently. Absolutely. So I went out and looked at all the other kind of rugs that you can make. And my goodness, there are tons of YouTube videos and stuff on different kinds. So there's this one style called a toothbrush rug. Which I think is a form of crochet. It really is. It's totally a form of crochet. And the reason they call it a toothbrush rug is because back in the day, I don't think you see this anymore, but your toothbrushes used to have a big hole at the end of them. And they were using that to... I mean, essentially, you're taking strips of fabric, connecting them together, and they are using that strip of fabric. And it looked like the fabric, and I'm sure there was different um, patterns saying you use one-inch strips, you use two-inch strips. I'm sure that there's a variety. So I don't know that that's necessarily critical to the success of it. But you... Feed that through the toothbrush that had the hole at the end of it. And that is what you use to go through. Um, you don't have to have a toothbrush. It's really just a long tapestry needle with a big eye. And that's what you need. Um, and you can make that out of uh, wire, really. You just need a kind of a loop. And um, you can make that easily. And... So there's toothbrush rug, which is kind of similar look as this, only it's kind of um, crocheted, really. Yeah. Now, there are a ton of books about using 
crochet hooks typically um the way the hooks size you'd use like a q hook which is yeah like, which like is a big, big plastic one. one yeah yeah um and again you can use strips of fabric you could use cut up grocery bags which is another fun application i hadn't thought yeah of that. because those you know can come out in long strips so that saves them from a landfill now i happen to use grocery bags. wait wait, wait. let's yeah. go back when you said cut up grocery bags i immediately went to paper you are talking plastic. plastic. Okay. Yeah, don't use paper. I don't think the paper would hold up. I would say no. <laughs> no, but plastic yes. grocery bags or fabric strips, either one works right. for that technique. Uh, the trick is, you know, do you have cute grocery bags? Most of the ones for the store we go to, they're brown, they're brown green. They're print. all brown. They're not. Like a Target bag would be kind of cute because that's white with some red on it. That may be, yeah. But I don't go to Target that much. <laughs> Me neither. I don't have enough of those bags. Um Yeah. Uh, but similar method, but using a crochet hook um, and strips of fabric. There, another method that was popular where my grandparents live, kind of central Ohio, uh, and both sets of grandparents had rugs like this, where they had long strips of fabric that were braided. Right. And then or woven, start, yeah. Well, well, no, these were three strips braided. Braided, yes, braided. And then you start coiling and then you're like stitching them together to secure. So, but doing it by hand, I don't think they did it on a machine. No. When you buy them commercially. And there are sure YouTube, because I did watch a YouTube video on that and there's different types of braids. Mm -hmm. So there's some with like four or five different strands that you're weaving or braiding together. And then there are, and I don't think they did use stitching. They braided it oh, into braided itself. It to, oh, okay. And so the, at least in the in the video I watched. Now I can see where you would do a three strand braid and then you would stitch it all together. Similar to this. Yes. And that makes sense. That would be super easy. Yeah. And I, I recall them being stitched together because I spent a lot of time as a kid like laying on my stomach and playing with like my Star Wars figures on these rocks. Right. When yeah. we were on family vacation visiting sure. relatives. Sure. <laughs> Um, but the ones I saw, they were braided. Mm -hmm. There are into some that yeah. they're braided into each other and there's no stitching involved. Okay. So that's another one. But you can also take fabric strips and actually weave your own rug. Yes. So you would take string or um, yarn um, and then you would make a loom, which you could do that with a cardboard side of a box, honestly. And then you would take your fabric strips and you would weave them into that loom and that would be super easy to do too i have several rugs like that that yeah. my grandparents made oh that your grandparents made have you done i have done loomed stuff that's you know tiny this big yeah. like my daughter has an art class i think my son probably threw his away he was like this is i don't want to do this <laughs> Just crafts are not his thing. It's okay. It doesn't yeah. have to be. That's fine. Yeah. You I got that to. cornered. It's cool. You don't um, have to do But this. yeah, I meant my daughter brought hers home and then she's like, don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll put it next to the ugly turtle that I made out of clay when I was five. <laughs> right. I have an ugly vase around here that I made. Yeah. Mm. And I think what my grandparents did, I don't, it might have been yarn, but it looked like it was a much thinner kind of cord, but it was a cotton cord. And then it was strips like of fabric. Like string or whatever, yeah. but a thicker. I think it was string. Yeah. And, and like all the colors. There is not really right, exactly. any kind of pattern to this. They're like, we're just making rugs because we got some fabric. <laughs> and I think it was like grandpa's old shirts. And I mean. And there is a technique of, of connecting the strips together. Yeah. I think you cut a slit in. Both sides. Both sides. You put. One side through, and, and then, then tuck the other end. Tuck through. the other end through, and then you have it knotted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's, I've seen that online too. So, the other thing that I was thinking about that it was trendy. I don't know, maybe ten, fifteen years ago, was drop cloths, where people were painting drop cloths to look like, you know, rugs, and then. They got crazy, and they got the Mod Podge out, and they were taking drop claws and cutting the fabric to where it looked like a quilt pattern mm -hmm. and Mod Podge it down. So you had this quilt drop cloth rug that they sealed with this stuff yeah and it was real those are really cool like there's a quilt store in the local area that had 
a few of those like just in the store and I always thought they were very and they made them out of really fun fabrics like they were um you know cafe and some yeah. really bright fun stuff and I think I've seen too where it's a gesso mixture, which I think Mod Podge is kind of a form of, but it's, oh, it's the sure way it to is. seal and secure. Uh, gesso is more used by painters and right. canvas prep to, you know, prepare something for. But all they did on the edges were they just turned, they just kind of turned it over and Stitch it. stitched it down and, you know, mitered the corners and you were fine. Um, and they were really cool looking. I think they're, and I've, I've seen them at sh uh, shows too. Yeah. Where people use them to decorate their booth with the. Uh, kind of the mod podge it's not mod podge it's not which we've all said like a hundred <laughs> times i have to admit I've got, I've got mod podge so but they have different kinds too there is a specific fabric kind which keeps it supple right viable. um and there are others that are not um so just whatever technique you're wanting to do pick out the right one there's some that are waterproof and some that aren't and yeah yeah i don't know that i would do that because what i'm typically using rugs for are i'm standing on an area and, and it, i want a little something yeah drop cloth has nothing it is pure decoration yeah. at that point point. and for a while i couldn't have those because i had a cat that took that as an opportunity for a new litter box which so all the rugs left my house for <laughs> many years and then when Zapper finally passed, it was like, oh, we could have rugs again. <laughs> oh, okay. and, and then I didn't get any. Uh, and then I made this one. I'm like, oh, no one's going to pee on it. It's amazing. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. But I will say for these and, you know, any of the woven ones, like you can wash them because they're made right. out of fabric. I don't think you can with the drop, the painted drop. I off, don't think know. so. Yeah. But it's, it's a protected surface. So you can wipe it down with like soap and water. Or, or you know. I mean, and I've seen people use some of those drop cloth stuff on like an outdoor mm. type of decoration, like maybe in a sunroom or a screened in porch or just maybe on your deck too. But recognize you really want a waterproof or some yeah. kind of. And that point, it's just literally a decorate. You know, it's not going to give you any cushion. I mean, the drop cloths are cool and beautiful, but there are some drawbacks to them, I guess. From well, the in terms of just use it for the right application. But I do like the idea of, and I mean, people don't have to. You can do two and a half inch strips that are just your two and a half inch strips. And with all of these, the woven and the the braided and the rat uh, toothbrush and this, I mean, those I think are just, you can make those as big, as skinny, as round. You can make them round. Heart you can shaped. Make them. Those are a little bit more difficult to do heart shape, but you can do it. Um, there was a heart shaped braided rug in one of my grandparents' house. Oh, I was thinking a jelly roll would be difficult. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the heart shaped braided one, I don't think is that hard. Yeah, it's, it's just, just when how to braid to get the, the point corner versus yeah. the rounded part of the top of the heart. I will say it is a little tricky to get the first couple of rounds, like the corners on here. But I'm like, well, I'm standing on it, so it's not going to matter. <laughs> so mine, I ended up, and this is a tip too. These are very slicky on. I don't know that that's a word, but it is now. slippery. It's very slicky slippery on um hardwood floors because yeah. i i put mine in front of my um stovetop and there were a couple times i was like whoa and you're dealing with hot you don't want to slip potentially so, dangerous yeah. if you're on a hardwood or a tile or just not a carpeted surface um, you can either get a rug pad, which honestly looks like grippy shelf liner kind yes. of stuff. Yes. Uh, so I've had that. And then you've taped yours down. I actually taped mine to the floor only because cause she was like, I'm going to bring my rug. I said, yeah, because I'm not pulling mine up. <laughs> it's taped. Uh, that tape, Pam found this tape. We and used it as our market booth for two years. <laughs> and it's like, it ain't moving. I, I bought some for our house and it has saved us because my saluki her name shall be named josie thought that the rugs were ramps for 
she would run down the hallway and slide and purposely jump on the rug to slide. Like that was her whole goal. And when she did that, I mean, it would be like I would go in there and the carpet's like this. And it was a nice kind of, I don't know, six by eight carpet rug. Oh, it would be messed up. It'd be pushed up against the front yeah, door. This is a rug slash cat toboggan. Oh, gosh. It's hysterical yeah. uh, because the cats used to try and launch off of my old hopscotch tiles and it would kind of slide like as a unit. But for this, you know, because it's fabric, it'll bunch up. And so my one cat, um, who's not the brightest cat, he's the one that yells at mirrors, loves to like just be sitting there and then he'll do kind of the classic cat freak out of like, <laughs> A ghost. And, like, he'll just take off running or whatever it is he thinks he sees. And there's, like, not a lot of traction. It's like in the cartoon where there's running, but there's not actually going. And there's, just like, this puff of, like, dust. And then all of a sudden he runs out of rug. that Like, that's fed out behind him. And then he takes off. <laughs> but, yeah, there's some running and sliding and some oh, banking yeah. and some parkour. And, and so I'll go in and, like, straighten it out. So part of me wants to not put, like, the grippy stuff under it. <laughs> but just for comedy. I thought that, too, until it was just like she actually broke a, a chest that was the legs on it because of her sliding so much into that corner. And so it's like, we got to tape this down. So the, that tape and maybe we, you can put that in the show note if people need rug tape. <laughs> it is very good. So, yeah. So I taped down my rug. In my kitchen, which has hardwood floors. So I don't need to slip on next to a hot cooking pot. No. Especially if you were frying something. Mm. I don't fry a lot, so I'm probably okay there. But Yeah, I think for this style, and even a little bit with the weaving, there is, you do have to get used to how you tension the fabric pieces as you're joining them. Yes. Because it can get either real wavy where you're feeding too much of the outer ring of fabric, or it can cup where you're feeding too little of it. Like it's just basically you're not feeding at the same rate. Um, and and so like we've seen a friend of ours, he's like, I finished my rug and it just looks like this wavy clamshell edge looking thing. Now it does. It will relax and lay down. But if it's really bad. It's really bad. It's tough. Yeah. Um, it's, and there were a couple spots wet them on mine. If you, if you get them wet, that'll help. And then, yeah, lay them flat and let them dry that way. So when I finished mine, there was a little bit, a little wavy bits. And I just hit them with, you know, bottled water, some yeah. spray starch, and just, you know, kind of stretched and pressed. And then they like, lay, like, lay flat until the cat gets a hold of them again. Yeah. Um, but wetting down a rug, if you're seeing those waves, helps. Yeah. Kind of thing. And if it's super, super bad, you could actually get it kind of soaked and block put it. it, block it like you would a quilt. So put the pins in the corners to lay it down and that'll help too. So, but I enjoy mine and I'm going to make another one because I've got one in front of the stove and now I need one in front of my sink. So I just haven't had time to do it yeah. yet. I'll make additional for my kitchen where my current rugs in there kind of wear out. Or get yeah. Too yeah. So, and they're fun. Yep. Now we're going to take a closer look at the Jelly Roll rug, and we'll be right back. are back and we are going to talk about tracking progress in your quilts do you do it you probably... I, I didn't know what you meant by this so <laughs> well what I meant was <laughs> okay so my kind of thought process where I've been you know, and looking at the new decade, the new year and all that kind of stuff, I thought I really want to, and this is really popular online, is do a bullet journal and track kind of just a lot of things in my life, habits and um, they've got like mood trackers and just different things that I want to do as well as have a calendar of to do and stuff like that. So I I went out and I bought... Um, 
a bullet journal. And if you don't know what that is, it's um, a journal specifically, and you're not going to be able to see this, but it's with dots instead of necessarily lines in it. And so what people are doing is they're creating their own calendars and they're using, you know, washi tape and, you know, markers and, um, you know, doing themes and that kind of stuff. Well, one of the things, and they're using stencils. Well, one of the things that they're doing is they're, you know, tracking different activities. And a lot of people who I've been watching are like YouTubers. So they're tracking, you know, when they need to film and when, you know, when gets posted, that kind of stuff. Um, but I thought it's kind of, it would be specific for like quilters and crafters to track things. And I think you do this, you probably just do it in your head or on a spreadsheet. Whereas I'm, I'm trying to look for a way that I can do it more efficiently as a creative that I don't do well. Um, so what I was thinking about tracking progress is like listing out the quilts that I have in different stages or that I want to make and like track progress of, you know, have I bought all the fabric for that project? Have I done all the cutting for it? Have I, and you know, if we were designing a pattern too, have I designed the layout, that kind of stuff, um, cutting the fabric. So I guess my question is, how do you track your, and I know you've done this in the past. How do you track that? Pro what do you look for to track? Please teach me. What do you look for to track? If I'm going to, like as a creative, if I'm going to try to do this this year, as one of my goals, I want to be better at tracking some of the things I do um, and more accountable to myself for that. How, like, what are you doing to, like, do that? So... The way that I make quilts is typically one at a time. And so I, right, I don't <laughs> need to track multiple things at one time. Now, I mean, I will get to a point like I'm right now. I have four quilt tops that are ready to be quilted. I know the, the one that I have to do first because it's like due for a baby shower. Um, so I'm like, well, that's what I'm going to work on this afternoon. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but it's rare that I am having multiple things going on where I need to track in progress works like that. So right off the bat, Say like it. it's you and I do stuff different. So. No, I know. And I know we do. <laughs> I'm just trying. You but know. for me, it's visually in the sewing room because I'm typically focused on one thing at a time. Like it's out and I can see it. And then when I go in there, I'm like, oh, that's a thing I'm working on. Now, admittedly, there are times when it's like, oh, I'm really tired of cutting. I have like 11 frillion more half square triangles to cut and then I have to sew and I kind of want to take a break. So... You know, I may have two things going, but they're going to be different. Like, oh, there's an applique, there's there's an applique project that I've been, you know, working on and off on, and it's right. there. I can see it. It reminds me, like, hey, you should work on this, but I don't necessarily feel like working on applique. So I'm like, mm -hmm. and I have to admit, I get I get caught up in that thought process more, I think, than you do, because mm -hmm. I'm very much, yeah, I'm not feeling quilting. Like, honestly, and she knows this is true. There could be a quilt on my long arm for two weeks. And I haven't touched it. And it's like, I'm just not in that yeah, place where I can like I want to do a lot quilt of that or I need to process it more knowing, thinking about what I want to do on it or yeah. that kind of stuff. So like I'm very much a, yeah, I want to cut. Like I like cutting. I want to cut. And then there are times where like I do not want to trim anything. I trimmed all day yesterday. I'm like, I don't have to trim anymore. I'm done trimming but as a so you only work at one thing at a time in terms of like specific, I, I will not have two things out that I'm trying to cut at the same time um because I do leaders and enders and piecing there will be additional blocks that I'm making when I'm like focusing on one project but it's stuff like oh it's a um you do like uh, scrappy trip around the world, or yeah, yeah. I'll do four patches, or you, most recently, I've I have all these strips that are cut for um, scrappy trip around the world blocks, and it's a Bonnie Hunter free pattern. And I'm like, oh, when I get to twenty blocks, I can make that into a top, and then that will be quilted and donated through our guild to Defax for foster kids, right? And they're just like super bright and colorful. And all I have to do is like just pull strips together, 
six at a time. Um, and so like that, I guess you could count as a second project that's ongoing, but it's not, it's not requiring active thought because I'm getting those strips as I'm just trimming up my scraps for other stuff. Okay. So I don't have to like cut all my strips for my scrappy trip around the world block. So knowing that there are creative brains out there and we need your help on this, <laughs> I would break the stages down like this. Please tell me if I'm missing something. All right. So... Like, I'm going to list, this is my plan for my bullet journal, is I'm going to list what projects I want to get done either by month or I'm just going to have a grand list. And if I have a grand list, then I'm going to say when I need them done by. Now, are these things you realistically expect to get done this year or are they like, one day I'd like to make it to your Jane? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think these, I want these to be projects of either... I've got the quilt top done and I need to quilt it or I know that I want to make a quilt for my nephew and it have this theme around it or I know I want to make you know a quilt for this person for whatever like I think it's more start to finish kind of stuff than it is necessarily you know maybe I mean yes one of the things that will be on there is my um Karen Stone, New York Beauty. I want to get that done. And I think that that's a reasonable kind of mm -hmm. kind of thing. So here's where I'm thinking I need help. <laughs> this is really selfish. This is all about me. All right. <laughs> Hopefully this helps other people. But so I'm thinking like the stages are buying fabric. Like because if, for example, my nephew's quilt is going to be a Kentucky basketball quilt. I want to recreate the logo um, and give it to him. So I'm going to need to go buy some gray fabric and maybe some fabric that matches the cat, you know. So cutting, right, piecing or applique or and or mm -hmm. applique. Any special techniques that need to be done prior to quilting. Quilting. Binding and label. Am I missing something? I think what you're missing is the fact that this is going to drive you crazy. Because you hate tracking this kind of stuff. I do. I do. I and think you're trying to find a more creative way to track it. And that's what bullet journaling is going to do for you. Exactly. Okay. So bullet journaling is like creating your own layout and creating your own. So I feel like I'm going to invest time. And we'll see how this goes. I think you're... My fear is you're going to get so into the journaling, you're just going to spend all your time journaling and not actually doing. That's my fear. And it's probably a very <laughs> valid fear. I agree. Um, but I do believe, and wisdom will tell you, that if you want to get something done, you need to write it down and set goals. And as a creative, I don't tend to do that. And I want to develop that more and be better at that. And I think this is a tangible way mm -hmm. to do it yeah. with a process that I do completely understand, you know? Yeah. So I do want to track it and go, because I've never, I know that you used to, I don't know that you do it anymore, but I know you used to take pictures of all your quilts and have a Pinterest board of all those. I've never done that. And I think that that would be I don't know, an encouraging way to look back on my year. Yeah, and it's a very visual way to, like, track what you've done versus, you know, you can also do it in a spreadsheet or a list, but then you're like, what, what's this crazy name that I named a thing? What even is that? But, like, Pinterest or even Instagram is, you know, a lot of people use that now. And right. You can pin things from Instagram, but to me it's like, oh, it's another step. <laughs> I don't know. I just think, what other ways do you track your goals aside from... See, I guess I'm trying to balance the creative, like the bullet journaling to me is like, oh, I feel like I could do this. We will see. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'm okay to fail at this, I, but I do want to, I do want to be better at setting goals and accomplishing goals. And part of that is quilting for me. And it's not just that I'm going to use it for other things too, personal things, but. Um, but to be accountable to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that that's something we all should do. Is that presumptuous of me to say? I think it de 
depends on why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you know, like, oh, I have commitments to meet and, you know, these are going to be gifts for people. And maybe the people didn't know that you're going to make them, like, maybe your nephew doesn't know. And so he's he, not expecting it. Yeah. I mean, if he watches this, surprise. <laughs> he doesn't watch this. <laughs> doesn't watch he didn't that. have time for this. Um, and so I think it depends on why you're doing it. Um. Because it is, it is like a common business practice of like, will you manage what you can measure? And that's why, because I have, you know, a job in corporate America and like, oh, it's beginning of the year. Everybody set your goals for the year. We're going to hit this much in sales revenue and we're going to, you know, this much right. marketing conversion, blah, 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 you know, all those. And and when like, oh, I'm going to make 20 quilts or I'm going, you know, or, so are you trying to hit a number or are you just trying to stay more organized from a creative perspective? I'm trying to stay more organized okay. as a creative perspective. I don't care that I make like, cause honestly the, and I think the Karen Stone quilt, the New York beauty quilt. Um, I don't care if it takes me a year to make that it's going to be a stunning quilt. I'm going to take my time to do it. But I do need to have goals about it. In other words, you know, I want it to be a king size quilt. I want it for my personal bedroom. Um, I want to make pillowcases with it. So there's some things that are just personal goals. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't care that it may take a year to do because it's going to be done well and quilted well. And because it's mine, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not. It's not a, uh, I don't know, it's not a, a, a numbers game, yeah. I don't think, for with me. The trap that I know I fall into frequently is getting so caught up in the measuring of the thing is that I'm not actually doing the thing. And that's why I expressed that fear earlier of yeah. like, oh, we get so into bullet journaling that that's now the thing that you do to be creative instead of right. the thing that you're bullet journaling about. Um, but but the bullet journal for me is going to be a lot of other things. This is just one. Yeah. I just think creatives brains we don't do this well and i don't and i think that maybe this may be a way to do it well or there may be other ways too um you know so and, and i think it's good for us i don't think it's a bad thing yeah. that we can um i question if you need a category for special techniques but only because i don't know what that means beyond like piecing an applique oh if i were going to paint something or add beading to something or you know that and that for me is very honestly you know valid because mm -hmm. i do stuff with those kinds of yeah things. and that's not typically the kind of stuff that i make so, so i'm like oh, you need that but I, it's the kind of thing like i wouldn't need it because right. i don't make those kind of quilts right yeah but you know there are some things that i'm like oh that needs this or whatever and kind of thing so, yeah, so. i mean i think you've got the, the basic categories right okay my other fear with it is because you're creating your own template, it feels not repetitive. I don't think that's the right word. But if you're having to recreate this framework every time you're on a new page, no, is no, that no. going to drive you crazy? No, no, no. I'm going to do one page and I'll have all these things on it and just list the quilt and da, da, da. But I think part of this, now that you've said it, I think part of this is take a picture at the end. And post it on Instagram. I think that could be a part of mm -hmm. completed, not just that I'm done with it, but I've documented that I did it and when I did it kind of thing. I think that's a good idea. There you go. Yay. Woo. But you don't see yourself ever kind of like, how do you track your progress? Like, this is how I want to do it this year, but how do you track your progress? Um, in the past, I kept a list on the sidebar of my blog of, like, here's what I'm actively working on. And it would be, like, maybe four or five projects. Right. And there was always, like, the one UFO that I finished last year. Hooray for Dress and Garden. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and I'm like, well, and I'm done. <laughs> she has no more UFOs. <laughs> no more long-term ones. I finished that 21-year-old cross-stitch project. There you go. And I finished that one, and we're good. <laughs> I probably have a 21-year-old quilt over there. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. They're not that old. They're not. They're not. They're old, but they're not. They're not legal to drive yet. I would say 10 years. Seriously, 10. I thought we had an earlier show where you talked about 
one of your first quilts that you have not yet quilted. <laughs> and if you've been quilting 20 years, you're probably kind of close to that. <laughs> no, that's done. Okay. <laughs> My husband's looking at me like, are you sure? Mm. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I don't keep track of them well. Therefore, it's we need project, to do girl. This. You do what you want. You do you, boo. <laughs> well, <laughs> therefore, I need to keep track better. Um, and I don't, I am not going to, because I don't want to fail at this. I am not going to list every project over there because there's some that quite honestly, I should go through and go these. And we talked about this in a different show, but these maybe need to be donated or let go or, or like, trashed. hey, does anyone want to finish this? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. There are a couple over there that I'm like, yeah, this is never going to get done. I'm not interested in this anymore. I'm, yeah, kind of thing. So. So are you going to take pictures of your bullet journal and post that or? I think I am. Um, I'm going to be, because there are going to be some private things about the bullet journal that I won't share what? with everybody, which I think is valid. But I think I am. I'm really kind of excited about this idea of just, I really, you know, I think this is a good way to start the decade. Let's. You know, let's be more organized about things. And I, you know, and sometimes I have to admit, I kind of buck against some organization, but some I do not. Like, I have totally embraced how my fabric stash is organized. And it's been organized like that for at least 10 years. Yeah. So, and again, the trick, as we've talked about before, is finding the system that works for you. Right. And so maybe this bullet journaling will be, um, I, I don't know. It'll work for me, and maybe it'll work for other creatives. And so, yeah, I'm going to. Cool. We'll see how it works. We I can update you. <gasps> There'll be an update. There you go. <gasps> so, have you ever made a fabric rug or bullet journal? You can leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode, or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches, and let us know. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. We'd like to thank Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. More info about our show, as well as links to purchase fan gear, online classes, and quilt patterns can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.